All right, I had a lot of luck with students teaching piano for 10 years, and I'm going to show you some of the things that I would do with them. I would teach them all incredibly fast because I would focus on practicing technique exercises. Repertoire should generally be, for beginning students, I say first two years, three years maybe, repertoire should be taught by rote, not by reading. Sight reading should be a thing to itself for several years. But in the beginning, repertoire should not come from sight reading. It should come from teaching by rote. And the early beginning repertoire should be technique exercises. So the uh, piano for quitters, Mark Almond, I spoke with him over the phone once, wonderful person. Knows Cynthia Tobias, actually used her studio to record his series. She understands learning styles. He has very good things to say about reading. First, my method was to teach these exercises and reading I would use Francis Clark. A 13 year old who's taking band in school, band class, like trumpet player, saxophone, trombone, anything, uh, violin. A 13 year old, eighth grade student starting, I would use these exercises and I would use Francis Clark, keyboard musician for the adult learner it's a gray book about that thick. And in 18 months, I would teach that student what it took me 10 years to learn using the James Bastian series. Now, um, this is where it all begins. Now, everything I'm telling you is for teachers. So I'm explaining this for teachers. I was a teacher teaching piano for 10 years and then I was teaching English in Asia for another 10 years and I would occasionally teach piano there also. A 13 year old, 8th grade, taking band class, using this method I would teach that student multiple times, and many students I did this, 10 years worth of material in only 18 months. And I would do it by focusing on technique. Repertoire, I would teach by rote, by demonstration. Uh, today we have synthesia for that and, and things similarly, just or watching on a video. But reading notes, I would use Keyboard Musician by Francis Clark for the adult learner. Francis Clark for the adult learner, Keyboard Musician. It's a great book about this thick. Uh, about the year 2005, it cost about $25. And I would use that, everything in it I would use for sight reading. And I would, student would read it only once. And I would go through the whole book, I would teach the lessons, but no repertoire from that book. And this is the method that I use. So I'm explaining this for teachers. Oh, and I'm here at a university, so if you hear other sounds, uh, those are happy students. Um, and I'm very fortunate. I have a friend who said that uh, I'm able to use this uh, concert C. It says uh, a Yamaha C. So yay, cheers for Yamaha. This is what I would teach first stage, the basic triad. And I would talk about C, E, and G and just talk about it. I, I would explain the names of the notes. This is C and you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And, that, and, I, and then just play here. Don't teach the student to think. Just teach the, the fingers teach the muscles. Muscle memory. Take your hands and correct the student's fingers if they're wrong. Explain on inversions that we're doing this. It's either three and two or two and three. So we're going to practice this. Practicing these forms. Do not teach this. Don't teach that with, you know. Don't, don't teach this first. It has to be the inversion. And by doing this, the student will learn to hear tones in the same chord. Very quickly, as a student does this, about 30 minutes uh, every day, 
for a month, four days a week, four weeks, every day, 30 minutes, does amazing wonders. Student will gain a year of knowledge in that time. The student should practice no more than five minutes without the teacher because you don't want the student to practice wrong. Practice is an observed practice. A, a lesson, excuse me, is an observed practice. A lesson, a piano lesson, is not a time to grade the student on how good or bad they did. It's not a test, it's not an exam. It's an observed practice. So early, it's getting the fingers, and that can take a week or two every day, observing. About 30 minutes, maybe a small break, massage the hands when they get tired. Like, I will massage the, the student's hands for them and give them like, oh, oh, you know, that's a massage, mom sitting watching. Yup, kid, it, it hurts when you learn stuff and get a massage, massage, have a comfortable uh, pain to them. You know, kids are learning all this stuff and they get the principles of exercise. Fingers first. Don't have the student sit there and figure it out. Piano is not about figuring it out fast. Piano is about muscle memory, which comes from practice, the same way you get to Carnegie Hall. Now, these forms, again and again, and I'm going slow explaining this, but that's how it feels with the student. After a few weeks when the student gets the correct fingering, uh, could, could, depending on the age, uh, six years old, more time, eight years old, a couple weeks, 13, uh, taking band class, um, a t typical band class in a, in a normal school system. Um, it could be a week, it could be four lessons. So, and again, I'm presuming that, you know, we're starting doing once a day, not, not every day during the normal school year, but maybe during a summer vacation time or during a vacation time, do it in intense, like a, like a week or two, or maybe a few months over summer break. But then normally throughout the year, it would be once, maybe twice a week. Uh, maybe once every two weeks, if, depending on how far away the piano teacher is. So the student gets this first, and it's only in C. And the whole time you're talking about C, E, and G. Oh, no, 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 put your, put your five on G. No, 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 watch your finger. Student plays it wrong, I say check your fingers, and then that'll usually get it right. So by now, the student knows what C, E, and G are. Next thing to learn, right away, once the student can get the correct fingers, 5-1. And that's the second stage of piano lessons, where part of it is observed technique practice, and the other part is the teacher demonstrating for the student to do ear training. So I'll explain. So explain five leads to one. And I'll have the student listen to it. Hear that? Did you hear that? Okay, and then I will go around in a circle with fifths. I'll say, see, this is a C. You've been playing this, right? This is a C. I'll explain this because eventually I'm getting to this. Eventually I'm getting to that. So first I'm going to explain the concept that five leads to one. This is one, two, three, four, five, so you're doing one, three, five. Okay, the student gets it because they've been practicing this for a few weeks. And so I'll do, and then we'll do, C leads to F, F leads to B flat, and B flat leads to E flat, Flat leads to A flat, A flat to D flat, the D flat to B flat to B, and B will lead to E, B will lead to A, A will lead to D, and B will lead to G, and G will lead back to C. See, it's a circle. Maybe I'll do that a couple times, and so the student understands that five leads to one, and I'll play it so the student can get the idea. Five goes to one, so we'll play this now. We apply it to our chord practice. And that's how to do arpeggios. Oh, well, in the beginning, try it. it was, uh, not, not this, but uh, sorry for misspeaking. <laughs> I'm really tired and exhausted going on five hours of sleep because I just wrote a big, long, fat book. So. Uh, today's a day to do this, so forgive me. So we've got uh, these, these triads, how to teach triads. They need to have the 5-1 sequence at the root.
at root and the first and second inversion. And by doing this, we're doing ear training to teach. This is a fifth interval. They'll mess up and they know what a backwards uh, fifth sequence sounds like. I say this backwards. So, and they'll learn the fourth. So Francis Clark learning intervals. That's important for ear training. All of this is happening at the same time. And by having sequence, when they're older, they'll automatically, whenever they play this, they'll automatically feel an unction to go dun dun. They'll feel a sequence in their fingers. And as I keep jabbering at them through one lesson after another, they know this is five and this is one from sequence and what that means. That means that seven's right here. And that means that two's right here. And that means that this is four and here's your six. And so by getting these, it becomes very easy to just, oh, that's my four, or that could be an F2, depending on if I'm doing it. Okay, or it could be my, my four. Okay, so it becomes easier to add those two, four, six, seven notes, sevens, a full note down. I suppose we could do the 11. So, by having the sequence, they've got ear training, very important, and they know where the, 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 the sequences are, the one, three, and five tones of the scale in the chord. This is how to practice triads. First get the fi correct fingers for C, then sequence. Then do D. After that, E. Because right away, we're not going to do F and G yet because our goal isn't to do easy. We want to we wanna get our abilities rounded early. So do C. Right away, we do adding a center black note. And then E, same shape, but we're, we're, we're moving it to different places. Next, I would do A. Uh, but we could do F and G and go right up, because F and G are the same as C. Go right up in order. Don't do B. Not yet. Because, you know, that gets into another issue, into scales. I would do this next, before I did B. I would do B last. And then I would walk around others one white note in the middle and then after I've covered those I would do B and B flat don't think it really matters which one probably you could do them at the same time by that time with the student so again we want to quickly get we start with this and we're that D E uh, F G if you want A and then start with F sharp because that's that's easy it's, it's even and then from there, we're going to start back at uh, D flat, E flat, A flat, and then uh, B, B flat, and B would be on the same day. And again, we're going to... Pardon me for the incorrect fingers. So, we finish all this. How to do scales. Scales. Once you've got the triads, it's time to learn scales. How to learn scales? The first scale to learn is not C, ever. The first scale to learn is F sharp. Because the black notes, the black notes show where your fingers go. These three fingers go on those three black notes, these two fingers go on those two black notes, thumbs in the middle. F sharp is easy because the thumb will hug the big group. And those are the correct fingerings. Now, same thing with C sharp would be next. D flat. Okay. And then we teach the order of sharps and flats. C looks like a zero and has zero. G looks like a power button and has one corner, so one sharp. D looks like a D ring, two corners, it has two sharps. A looks like a triangle, has three sharps. E looks like a square, has four sharps. B, if you make it with two thicks, it has five corners, five sharps, very easy. And then the flats is the sharps 
uh, you know, minus seven is the D. So B has five sharps, B flat has two flats. You know, and, and I spoke with a PN teacher from China, Chinese don't know this. And so I made a little video for them about this, actually. That, that, they were really fascinated with that. So we know how many sharps in flats just by looking at the shape of the letter. It's very simple. And then the order of sharps and flats, I don't do that F, C, G, D, or whatever, I, B, E, A, D, G, C, F. I don't, I know that. Uh, fat cats go down alleys eating bees, funny children go dancing eating broccoli. Um, but here's an easier way, visual, visual, visual. Order of sharps. Now you could, you could add more and maybe go, you, you, you could do that if you wanted, but that's not the important part. Big one first, sharps go up. Big one first, sharps go up. That's the order of sharps. So we're doing A, has three sharps. They're gonna be one, two, three. Okay, those are our three sharps. It's very easy, very easy to figure out. A flat, uh, four flats, flats go down, start big, go down, order of flats. So we're doing A flat, A sharp has three sharps, A flat has four flats, because the sharps and flats equal to seven. So, four, there they are. These fingers go here, everything else figures out for the white. Here's our order. should learn that before they learn C. So start with F sharp, then C sharp, G flat, D flat, and then work your way down with the flats, and finally, eventually, you get to B flat. You're doing lots of white notes. And then it's F. F is the first white note scale, and it's the same thing. We're still doing that. two octaves if you want while you're doing this. Probably better, but depends. Learning it correctly is more important. Depends on the age and, and ability of the student. So then you work your way down, and then you go to C, and slowly start adding sharps. Because again, the black notes ergonomically teach the fingerings, so there's no thinking involved, and it's all muscle memory. By the time they get to C and the others, and they need to think to do their coordination, uh, a little more coordination, they've already got the muscle abilities, so we're teaching one thing at a time. After scales, after the normal scales, blues scales, blues scales are two finger scales. And once you've got a blues scale, you can do anything you want with it. D is the second one to learn because E. same shape on the keyboard as I just demonstrated. So there you go. Uh, I'm going to have to do some guesswork with the rest of these. G, two note scale. Uh, B starts on this finger because you've got to get the black notes to line up. Right. So that's B. F is a three finger scale. And there, there are a few others. Uh, let's, I'm sad to say that I haven't practiced all of my blues scales, so I'm going to have to figure this out on camera. that does weird stuff. Let's see. There, that's C sharp. Uh, let's see. 
let's look at B. I want to think B flat, B flat anyway. You can figure them out for the most part. A number of them need three fingers. Many of them do two. Most of the white notes do two. So, uh, but flat scales are two finger scales. It's very important. Also technique to teach, boogie woogie. Very important to learn early. My grandmother hated this song. One hand, two hands, together, same thing. And this strengthens the hands. So that's uh, fun that you can have later on. Uh, I invented, I made a little song and I call it Study Boogie. And and this is uh, this is this is the this is our little C here. And I would play it in D, and I would arpeggiate the chords. And this was designed for any student writing busy work, like handwriting practice or typing practice. Over at uh, write.pink, it's a website, not .com. .pink. I, I have a number of exercises, and when I would be working with students that are busy doing writing and typing exercises, busy work, no thinking, busy work, I would play this, and it helps keep them focused, but it also teaches them typical uh, art, you know, basic triads and arpeggiation, also blues feel, and it was to do it all at the same time. This is the study boogie. so you can understand it, and I'm changing the speed. I prefer to play it fast. But the idea here is you know, Boogie Woogie is a train, and this is the whistle, and, and this is the locomotive going along up and down the hills. the hills and on around the bend. So that's the train chugging along. And this is the whistle. Muscles are actually failing on me because I've been playing too much recently. So, um, the uh, uh, yeah, that's that's I call it study boogie. Uh, that's probably the worst that I've ever performed it in my life. <laughs> so I may actually do a proper recording of study boogie for your enjoyment, but I'm teaching you how to play it. Now, one thing about this, I want to show you this. Th this is um, getting to. This is something we do in blues. I'm here and I want to go there. So I've got, uh, how many black notes do I have? Let me all know, to, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes will get me there. Well, I'm going to get there in six. I'm going to cram them down and go. I'm going to get there that way. Or I might, I might get there in four. 
This, the feel is, okay, five, four, three, two, okay, one, you know, one, one and a half, like that's the feeling. Let's see if we got two, two, five, four, three, uh, one and a half, one and three quarters, like that's the feel of that. So, so we're getting two, so it's, it's, it starts on a normal scale. So I got here, I'm gonna get to the next one. start. Or you can do, uh, that's it, that's the order that I teach. Then, uh, in addition to that, a uh, keyboard musician for sight reading, for sight reading, uh, by Francis Clark, uh, teaching intervals. And I'll also do ear training early on. I'll do ear training. I'll say, first inversion or second inversion. I'll have the students sit away and listen. Even, even while they're doing uh, D and E, I'll have the students sit and listen. And I'll say, tell me, was this root, first inversion, or second inversion? Or, and I'll have the student sit and listen, maybe even for 10 minutes out of 30, listening, doing ear training, saying, what chord is that? Oh, well, that's, that's going to be a C9. Oh, that, you know, and ask the student to listen. That's very important for a teacher to do ear training with a student also. So in the earlier stages, it's all technique. In the later stages, it's listening to recognize even what key, C or D or E. Uh, even that can be useful. That's how I've done it.